everyone, Anastarita here. Today, we'll be integrating OpenAI image generation into our Touch Designer project in real time. We'll go over how to bring external Python libraries in our project, how to interact with them within Touch Designer, and how to see results in real time. We'll end up with something very similar to this in which we have an engine comp where we can uh, send prompts, select the image size, the amount of images we want to create and a pulse that allows us to bring these images in Touch Designer and modify them with all the power that Touch Designer has. So let's get started. So most likely you're familiar with DALI, which is a variant of the, of the GPT architecture developed by OpenAI that is designed to generate images from textual descriptions. And if you follow Jack Dolores' tutorial on integrating GPT for text generation, you're going to notice is a very similar process that we're going to be following today. Um, the first thing that we have to do to be able to integrate OpenAI library is bring in external Python libraries into a touch designer and have an idea of how that works. If you've never done this before and you have no idea what I'm saying when I say external Python libraries, Matthew Regan has an amazing resource that can take you uh, through all the whole process that really goes in depth about how to bring these external Python libraries and what is actually the best way of uh, bringing them in any case so your project works consistently. Um, this is going to be on the description below, so you can check the link. Definitely give it some time. It's an amazing resource. A thing to note is that we will be working, we will be creating a local project uh, in our tutorial today, meaning that you will be downloading all the Python libraries within your system, referencing them within your system. If you were to open the file that we create at the end of the tutorial somewhere else, most likely you would have to download those libraries again to make the file work. So that's a thing to notice. Uh, pa uh, Matthew Regan goes into depth about how to create a project that is self-contained and allows all Python libraries. So I really encourage you to check this resource um, whenever you have a moment or, or even before continuing with this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do before moving forward is making sure we have the right Python version to work in our project. Uh, the Python version you want to be using is the one your Touch Center build is using. And the easiest way to know which one it is, you can just go to te Dialogues, Text Board, and immediately as soon as you open it, it tells you, hey, Touch Center is using this Python. My case is 3.95. And an easy way to know whether I have the right version or not, if you are on Windows or if you, you can open your command prompt, if you're in Mac, you're going to open your terminal, and you can just write Python dash capital V, and it will tell you the version of Python you are using. If you don't have the right Python version or you don't have Python installed at all, you can definitely go to the Python release page and find the version that works with your Touch Designer project. Now, once you have Python installed, the next thing you want to do is that you want to make sure you are referencing that Python version in your Touch Designer uh, preferences. And to do that, you want to go to Edit, Preferences, um, and when this window open, you want to select add external Python to search path, and you want to put in here the address of your Python installation. In my case, I'm in Windows. It is on app data, local program files. It is the standard uh, location, but if you saw it in a different place, you might have to redirect to that. The reason why you want to do that is because the next thing we're going to do is installing the OpenAI library. And to install the OpenAI library, the first thing you want to do is go into your OpenAI account. Uh, you can say login, so you have all the information. And it's going to ask you whether you want to use ChatGPT or go into the API. Because we're creating something with the API, of course, we want to go to the API. And you can see already there is a bunch of resources of how to create things uh, using the API of OpenAI. Uh, but I want to go is to my quick tutorial and uh, the installation setup. And the one thing is how to install the OpenAI Python library. And you can see it includes to use pip to install. Touch Designer downloads pip with itself, so you shouldn't have any issue with this. And the way you would do it, you would just copy this and paste it either in your command prompt or in your terminal. So if I come in here and I were to paste this, uh, you can see that I already had installed, so it says that my requirement is already satisfied 
but you can notice that it's installing this library inside my Python location. And that's the reason why you want to make sure your touch designer is pointing at the right Python location, because otherwise you're going to download the library and it's not going to find it. The last thing I want to do before I um, start working on my touch designer project is getting my API key. That API key is going to allow me to create things using the OpenAI. <laughs> API and so to find yours you can just click on your or your letter like you have the circle of your profile and uh, you can see um, you might view the API keys and it's going to show you your API key. A thing to notice is that your API key is shown to you only once. So if you create a key you want to copy and paste it and put it in a safe place because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it ever again. Like right now, I couldn't see this key if I didn't have it somewhere else. So that's a thing to remember. And remember, your key is a number that is like a secret number. You shouldn't be sharing it with anybody because uh, it is what gives you access to um, the technology. One thing to know is that all these image generation systems either OpenAI, NextLeg, that it's a community create version of MidJourney or Stable Diffusion, do have a cost for creating images. You can use them probably closely to free if you are like just uh, creating images, but if you're using the API, there's a cost associated with it. In this case, uh, when you create a first account, you get an $18 um, trial, trial like amount of money that goes very far. So, um, but just so you know, that's a thing to consider with this. So just to recap before we move forward, we want to make sure we have the current Python version installed. We want to make sure that our Python version location is set up in Touch Designer. We want to install our OpenAI library, and if it's on the right location, it will be found. And we want to make sure we have our OpenAI key, API key to use. Now that we have those four things, we can head back to Touch Designer. And the first thing that I want to do is that I want to create my base comp. This will be holding all the parameters that I'm going to be sending to OpenAI to generate my images, but also it's going to help me at the end to optimize my project. So I'm just going to call this image generation. And to know what parameters I want to use, I'm just going to go back for a moment to my OpenAI documentation. And if you can see, here is uh, a set of uh, things that you can call when creating an image. You have a prompt, you have a number of images, you have the response formats, the size, and a user. In this case, we're going to uh, surface the prompt, the number of images, and the size. The response format, we're going to use a URL that we will be seeing through a web render top. And uh, we're not using user because we're not creating a like our facing application. This is the thing that you wanna do when you have an app and multiple users. So you wanna make sure there's no um, abuse of your system. But in this case, we only need prompt, number, and size. So those I know are the three parameters that I wanna create. So I'm just gonna go back to my comp. And if I right click in here and I say customize component, I have this window. Uh, the first thing is that I want to add a page. You have the page base extension and common. I'm going to create a page called image generation. And if I click here, immediately it shows up on my parameters. So very quickly, I'm just going to create a few, three more um, parameters. The first one is going to be my prompt because we know we need that. And this is a string, because it's a string of text. This is a very easy to deduce. And I'm going to add my parameter. And I can see it here immediately. And I notice that my parameter has a label and it has a parameter name. This is quite important because the label is what I see as a user. The parameter name is what I'm going to be seeing when I'm editing my uh, Python. So that's the thing to remember. I want to make sure my parameter name is simple. In this case, prompt, prompt. There's no difference on that. That's a very easy to keep. But uh, there's other things in which, for example, image size is another parameter. And in this case, for image size, um, I want to use a menu. And the reason why I want to use a menu is because if we go back to my documentation, I notice that my image size has only three sizes. And those three sizes have to be in a very specific format. So I want to make sure that whenever I'm using my comp, uh, Maybe I'm not sending a wrong number that is going to cause a fail. So I'm just going to make sure that I have control over that. So I'm going to add my parameter. And I can here 
put the label is what I'm gonna see. So 256 by 256, 512 by 512, and 1024 by 1024. But in my menu names, actually, I'm just going to use 256, 512, and 1024. Because I can, on my Python, make A times A. So I don't need to have both numbers. And that makes, sure, that makes it easier for me to make sure that I have uh, the proper syntaxes back there. And I know that my default is going to be 256. Perfect. And the last thing I want to add is my number of images. And uh, in this case, it is an integer based on the documentation. So I'm going to add my parameter. Another thing to notice is I have the parameter image size. Maybe I just want to name it size so it's easier. And my number of image, maybe I just want to call it number or n even, which is how it's called on the documentation. And in this case, I want to have an integer. And I can set a default, a minimum, or a maximum. In this case, I just want to have one to four images so i can just put the maximum of four but as you can see in the documentation you could actually have up to 10 images uh generated at the same time so now that i have all these three parameters the last thing i want to create is actually my pulse which is my send request the thing that is going to create or is going to say uh hey let's request these images from uh open ai so in this case i'm just going to call this send request and this is a pulse here it is and i add my parameter and i'm just gonna reorganize things in here in a way that makes more sense the last thing that i want to have is my send request of course because it's the last thing i will do i would put first my prompt and then my number of images on the size that sounds that looks good to me so now that i have uh my parameters set on my base comp i can go inside here and i can add a couple things um the first thing that I want to add is uh, a text dot. And that text dot is going to contain my API key that I'm going to call into my Python file. And again, you want to make sure your API key is uh, in a safe place. In this case, I'm just going to put it on this text dot. Uh, and then I would block. And now that I have my API key here, I can rename this like API key, a name that I can remember. The other thing that I want to do is I want to create my web render top, which is the way that I'm going to see my images. And I'm just going to have one for now. I'm going to call it image, oops, image response. And then I'm just going to put this in and out so I can see this from outside. And I want to activate this, quite important. If I don't activate this, it will never show me anything. So the last thing I want to do is add my parameter execute. So I'm just going to add the operator parameter execute. And what this is going to do basically is that it's going to listen to the parameters of the operator. I tell it to make the request. And in this case, the operator that I want to listen is this operator, the image generation. So I'm just going to say, hey, in my Python mode, parent. And so immediately it's like listening to image generation. And because I know I only want to make requests on pulse, I'm going to turn off value change. And the parameters that I want to listen are all. So I'm just going to put an asterisk. I could select one by one, but it all is good for now. So now I'm ready to start editing my Python. If I right click in here and I say edit content, it's going to open, in my case, Visual Studio Code because I have my system uh, configured like that. You could use any text editor, but uh, the recommendation is have a text editor <laughs> because we're going to start writing some things. It's not a lot, but it is more, way easier and more comfortable. And a good reason, and like whenever we're working with uh, execute, we want to delete everything we're not using. So I'm just going to start by deleting these things and everything above my own post, which is the only one that I'm using. And if you notice immediately, I this turned red all of a sudden. This is a good reason why you want to use a text editor. It's going to tell you when you're having errors on syntax that sometimes are the easiest one to lose or to miss that then become a whole issue. So because this is red, I know that something is wrong. In this case is that I deleted, didn't delete this return. So it's like an incomplete instruction. Now it went back to be uh, white. And if I save, uh, this is automatically updated on my touch designer file. So 
what I want to do now in my Visual Studio Code is that I want to declare the function that is going to, let's say, run my ChatGPT API within Touch Designer. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say, hey, dev, to declare that function. And that function is going to call submit request. Oops, request. And just like everything, uh, just like the one on top, you can see I'm just going to do parentheses. And Visual Studio automatically adds the other parentheses and colon. And so here I have it. I am ready to start submitting my request. And before I move forward, the last thing I want to do is adding my return so I don't forget about it. Because again, this is the other type of thing that I can forget. And I'm going to build inside this the function that I'm going to be calling again, that is, it is going to call, be talking to uh, OpenAI. So in this point, I want to go back to the OpenAI documentation and see actually how we are calling our OpenAI API in Python. And you can see here, there's some information about example with the OpenAI Python package is what I'm interested on. We don't need to import OS because that would give us access to the operating system because we're working within Touch Designer Touch Designer is going to give us access to the operators we need, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do need to import OpenAI. And that's the first thing we want to actually include into our whole uh, script. Because let's say that's the thing, like, before you do anything, download these packages, and then we can start talking. So if I come back to my Visual Studio, I can come in here, and before everything else, I can just say, hey, import OpenAI. And just like that, it's going to, as soon as it runs, it's going to start downloading it. And also just to make my life easier, I'm going to put this in half so we can move on and see as we move. The other thing that we want to do, if you notice, is that we want to have our OpenAI API key and we want to call it. This, on the other hand, I'm going to put inside my submit request. I want to download this before I do anything else, so I don't have to do this all the time. It takes forever. But I want to make sure I have my API key active every time I submit a request. So the way that I would do that is that I actually going to follow exactly what it says at the beginning. So open AI API key equals, and uh, I have it in here. But what is interesting, and let me add a little bit. You can see here the red, and that's because we don't have the proper indentation. So I hit a tab once, and it's also because I haven't added what I'm going to do. Uh, but instead of saying, hey, get these in the environment of the operating system, what I want to get is that I want to listen to my operator API key. So I'm just going to say operator API, just like I would do it inside Touch Designer. And of that operator API key, I want to listen to the text portion of it. And so, too bad, I forgot to put these guys. Just again, as you would do it in Touch Designer inside Python. So, operator uh, API key on quotes text. So, right now, what it's trying to do is that it's going to find that API key inside my operator API key. Again, just to make sure I got this proper name. Yes, this is perfect. So, I can move forward. And now that I have this, the only thing that I want to say, hey, let's actually, let's, let me tell you where everything you want to hear about is. So this is the initial part. This is the authorization part. But now what I want to do is that I want to start requesting images. And in that case, the documentation about how to generate an image is super useful. You can see the first thing we do is we create something called a response. We tell the prompt the number of images and the size. And it gives us as a result an image URL where our image Sorry, it gives us a result, a URL where our image would be. Because I want to tell that my prompt is the prompt that I use on my parameter, and my number is the number that I use on my parameter, the first thing that I need to do is that I need to reference those. So what I'm going to do now is exactly that. So I'm going to say, hey, the prompt, when I say prompt, what I mean is my parent has a parameter. So parent, parentheses, just like I would do in Touch Designer, dot par, dot prompt because this is the name of the parameter. So right now, whenever I say prompt, I mean read this. And again, let's go back to Touch Designer just to make sure we are right. If I come in here and I say customize component, I can notice that my parameter is called prompt in caps. This parameter is called n in caps, size in caps, and send request in caps. And those are the names. Again, what is on parameter that I want to remember because that's what I'm going to be referencing in my Python. So Again, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with everything else. The other parameter is called n. And so when I say n, I'm saying 
my parent parameter called n and the other one is size and when i say that i'm meaning sorry my parent parameter size and again this could be any names but it has to be the exact same name that i have in here so now that I have everything referenced, I'm going to go back to my documentation and see what is the way that I'm using that reference. So let's see, documentation, and I have here my Visual Studio. And it tells me, hey, let's create a response. And this is OpenAI Image Create, and I'm supposed to call all these things. So I can just come in here, make sure that I'm in Python, copy, and I can paste this. Most likely, this is not going to respect syntax. Let's see. So yes, effectively, as I calculated, I have to remove some things, fix the indentation to make sure this is working. Um, and if I do that, there, it is yellow now again. But if you see again, my prompt that is using is a YSIMES guide. And I could say prompt, listen to prompt, but I know that's not gonna work uh, right now. So before we do any of that and it doesn't work, what we're going to do is that we're going to create something called an F string, which is a way to embed an expression inside a, inside a string on Python. So to do that, I'm just going to say, hey, F quotes, and I'm going to open uh, these curly guys, and then I'm going to say listen to prompt. And it's listening to that same prompt, but it's just formatting it. And then uh, as you see, we have the comma at the end added from copying this, but if we didn't have it, we will have to add this. And then for one, for n, I'm going to do the exact same thing, which is my number. I'm going to see f from uh, quotes, curly brackets, and I'm going to call listen to end, which is these n. So it knows that is this one. And the last thing I'm going to say for size, and size gets more interesting, because size, I actually have only one value. If you remember, when I'm listening size, I'm only listening one, because I only name my things 256, 512, and 1024. So in this case, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do, let me bring back my documentation, something very similar. I'm just going to say F. Oh, an important thing that I forgot to do in this case on the number, because this is an integer, I'm gonna tell it, hey, don't only send this as a, as a string, actually send this as an integer that you string in. So I'm just gonna put this inside a parenthesis. Uh, if I had started on the right order, I would have that parenthesis. Um, um, for my size, what I'm gonna do is F quote, and I'm gonna say curly bracket size times size. And so this is going to guarantee that it has the right format, that when it comes in here, it reads like this and doesn't read just like one thing. Um, and now that I have this, I'm basically telling it, okay, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Now I need it to give me my URL somewhere. If I was doing this outside Touch Designer, my response would be something like this, like a URL that is generated once the image is generated as a response. However, what I do know is that I want my image URL response to be sent immediately to my web render top. So this remains the same because this is basically the way that OpenAI creates the URL. But what I wanna do is that I wanna add uh, just like a little thing, listen to my operator, let's send this to my operator image response. But I think it's with caps and I can double check. And I want in that operator image response, I want to write on the parameter called URL, so dot par dot URL equals image URL. So what I'm doing is that I'm telling it this, put it in here. So, um, and just like that, I should be able to see my response on my parameter. So if I come back here, just to make sure that this is proper name, image response, image response, it seems to be fine. Uh, the last thing that I need to do, and let me control S. The last thing that I need to do is I created these requests and I did all these things, and this looks all nice and dandy. But if I hit pause right now, um, uh, nothing is happening, and that's because it is not doing anything on the pause. 
So what I want to do here is taking my polls and what polls we're talking about. I want to tell it a is actually my parameter name. Send request. Not bad. Oh my god. Send request, which is the way that I named. Remember again these polls. Let's send request. And uh, when send request, and again because it's a a touch designer parameter or name, I just want to put this. Uh, send request colon, and I want to say when this happens, please submit my request, which is. And so now what is happening is like whenever the polls of send requests happen, it's going to submit that request and it's going to do all these things that are happening down here. So let's see how this looks. So if I come in here, I can put my prompt. Happy cadence going with touch designer. Touch designer. <laughs> and let's see what we get. Um, so as you can see, it is like on hold because it's doing the one thing. Uh, it's like waiting for all the requests before continuing. And here we have some kittens playing with touch designer. I can change the size of the images to have larger images that I can actually see more easily. Um, but if I were to add more images, I don't have anywhere to send this. We go here, what you're gonna see is that in my image response is loading the uh, URL that uh, we ask it to create. So to fix that, I need to do a few things. I need to add a couple image responses more, like three more to make it four. But I also need to create a conditional on my Python that says, hey, if we have more than one image response, please put this image on here. And if I have more than two, put it in here and three more than here. So let's just do this very quickly. I'm just gonna add three more of this. And I'm gonna add a layout so I can see them all at the same time. I'm gonna select boy, all my image responses, drop them in my layout. I'm gonna change this to be grid. And if I come out to die, I have them all. And again, if I were to create, if I had to were to hit polls, it would only update the first one because I haven't told it to send anything different to the other ones. It's actually not sending anything different to the other ones. The other ones are just copy paste of the previous one. So to fix that, I'm just going to go to my Lens Studio project, sorry, my Visual Studio code, and I'm just going to comment this, comment this, and I'm just going to create a quick conditional, I'm going to tell it, hey, if n, that is the number of images I'm creating, is greater or equal than 1, and len is going to read the list, because remember, it tells me data, so it tells like a list of URLs, URL 1, URL 2, URL 3, so if the list on the response data is uh as well this list is greater than one so i'm having more it's greater than zero my bad it's greater than zero so in this case again if this number is greater than one and the response that i get is more than this so i'm getting a one here then let's do exactly the same thing we just did we're just going to take this image url this is the number one. Let me uncomment this. Let me put this at the right indentation. Take the response one and put it on the image response one. So that's fine. There is nothing to do in this one because this is literally just what we were doing. But if I copy and paste this and I say now when n is greater than two or equal and the response is one, let's just put this data one in my image response one. And let's do this a couple more times. Ah. 
And an important thing, the reason why I'm using zero in here and not one is because Python is written on base zero. So zero is one, <laughs> um, just in case you are wondering. So I'm just gonna save this and let's see, this is working. And effectively it created three images because I only have three. Four remains like this because that's what it has before. But uh, just like that, I do have or images and I can select the number of images. The one last thing that I want to fix is that every time I send an image request, these pauses my whole touch is under operation, which defeats the whole purpose of working on real time software. You know what I mean? Like if every time I do this, uh, everything holds, then it's not being real time. And the way that we're going to work around that is we're going to use or friend the engine comp. So for those of you who are not familiar with the engine comp, uh, the engine comp basically imagine it runs a second instance of touch designer in another thread. So this touch designer is running everything linearly from left to right in a single thread. This other engine comp is doing the same, but in another thread, meaning that if I have this running in here in the engine comp, it won't affect what's going out out here. So to do the engine comp, the best way of using it is course, I'm going to take this and I'm going to uh, save this component as a TOX. I have here already one that I created, uh, but I'm just going to replace that. Actually, it was the one that I created uh, earlier for the preview, but I'm just going to replace it now. And if I come here to my engine comp, I can say here after I save this as a TOX, I can be like, hey, take this docs file. Let's find it. My image generation. And it's going to give me an error first because it's loading it. Imagine it's like opening the touch designer. I'm just going to put an all in here. Um, and this came with the, <laughs> this came with the prompt. I said it with the prompt. So it came with the prompt. It came with the images. It came with everything. If you were like to create something that you're sending to other people, again, don't keep your API there. But also you could just empty this and put everything on the full values. But yes, now I have my engine comp. I have access to my same um, parameters and I can try it again, post a new image. And you can see that even though this is thinking, my LFO hasn't stopped moving uh, a frame because everything is being run on a second thread. And yeah, that's basically image generation in touch designer integrating open ai please let us know if you have any questions on the comments and if there's anything else you would like to see on this series of generative uh tools within touch designer see you next time hey folks thanks for watching if you like our youtube content i highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive hq pro the HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.